So, so our next speaker is, is Ying Ying Chen, and she will talk about uh, Wi-Fi enabled smart healthcare and IoT security. Thank you, Ying Ying. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roy. And uh, I, I hope I can catch up some time here also. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, based on the talk that in the very interesting talk we had this afternoon um, for the um, um, for the, uh, the, the faculties that we had here. And I will move along in the direction of the uh, smart IoT, and especially uh, we're going to talk about the, um, the security in IoT. And also, I'm also going to talk about uh, the IoT can, what IoT can do for us. Um, so I'm going to touch base about the smart healthcare that um, based on the uh, Wi Fi technology. Okay, so I just want to give a um, brief introduction is that um, like these days, okay, when we look into the IoT devices, okay, what are we looking at? Okay, many times, okay, for the IoT devices, okay, we actually look into those devices have uh, multiple sensing functionalities. Um, for example, you can have this uh, uh, motion sensors that are embedded in the keyboard and also have microphones in your smartphone. And uh, for many places, we uh, have this uh, uh, IFID uh, sensors being placed uh, to do this uh, uh, healthcare monitoring. And also people utilize it uh, in many places to do the warehouse inventory um, measurement. Um, so based on all of those uh, sensing modalities that are available uh, in these days in the, uh, uh, in the uh, IoT systems, and also, uh, for example, uh, some of the representations of, of IoT systems in the smart home domain uh, could even could be the smart TV and the smart refrigerator. And for those, okay, they have this um, provide the capabilities of acoustic sensing and also for the uh, Wi-Fi sensing, wireless signal sensing. So we've seen that, okay, uh, some of the sensors that the users, they need to wear uh, that um, we call the wearable sensors, uh, smartwatch is one form of it. So we call this as contact-based sensing, contact-based sensing. Well, on the other side, if we look at uh, the Wi-Fi devices around us, uh, such as the smart TV, uh, smart appliances, and those uh, we utilize we use, for those signals, we cannot really see, okay? So for acoustic sensing uh, and also wireless sensing and even with visible light sensing, we call it as contactless sensing because usually the users do not know the sensing activities is going on and uh, it is passively uh, sense okay, and derive what the user is doing uh, in the environment. So for this many applications, okay, we're looking at, okay, we're looking at that is, um, that is being uh, uh, proposed uh, or enabled by the contact-based sensing and also contactless sensing. Uh, we can see that uh, we can uh, doing this uh, mobile healthcare, uh, warehouse monitoring and uh, uh, use authentication and the speech recognition. So many of this uh, um, sensing applications uh, have been uh, enabled by this rich sensing modality. And however, there are also some security vulnerabilities. So this, okay, shows the trend currently we have here, okay. Um, the x-axis is the convenience of sensing, okay, by using the different sensing modalities from contact-based to contactless. You go from the uh, weak uh, convenience to the strong convenience and also for the accuracy, okay, we can see that from the low to the high accuracy, okay, what they can achieve. So for one of the examples, okay, that we have uh, for the work that my group has been doing is that we show that, okay, by just using the wearable sensors um, on your smartphone, okay, it can help, okay, it can help to perform the um, driver behaviors monitoring. And it can also perform personalized uh, fitness assistance by providing more detailed um, fitness coaching and prevent uh, injuries during your exercise. And further along, okay, we see the new type of sensors in your smartwatch that can measure the heart rate. Uh, we find that it can also capture 
um, your hand movement in a fine-grained manner, and further, we can perform gesture recognition and to do the sign language interpretation. So it can interpret the sign language in real time. And meanwhile, as I pointed out, okay, when we utilize um, those devices, uh, for example, the motion sensors okay, on the wearable device, it can actually disclose your passcode during mobile payment. So now a recent work showing that it doesn't matter which hand uh, you wear your um, smartwatch or use which finger to input your data. Uh, the password okay, could be recovered by just examining the trajectories by examining the trajectories that are derived from the motion sensor data. And uh, attackers will be able to recover your passcode okay, or PIN number during the mobile payments. So the next work okay, I'd like to talk about is that um, we want to show that okay, when we use the, the previous example, I showed that use the motion sensors, right? The motion sensors actually showing that the vibration can show the security vulnerabilities, right? So we also like to see that what the vibration can do for us. So in here, okay, this is some work that uh, we did in our group. Okay, we make, uh, we utilize a small sensor, low cost, small low cost sensor, and uh, um, uh, make a small a PCB board and have it connected to the smartphone. So you can see that. We'll be able to turn. Okay, we'll be able to turn the um, desktop, or we say the uh, the solid surface of the table uh, of the tabletop into a virtual keyboard. Okay, so this actually has a lot of uh, applications. Okay, by using the vibration sensing, okay, you can perform. You can you can have this uh, um, virtual keyboard by extending all the solid surface into a touch screen. So we can localize. Okay, small objects on the surface to enable the um, to enable the smart home environment. Like when I have when I place my phone in certain position, the light will be turned on. And more importantly, I like to show an application is that we can utilize the vibration okay, to do user authentication. Okay, that is when you put your palm on the door panel or on the desktop, you'll be able to do the user authentication. So. If we look, take a look at the history of the tangible user interfaces, okay, there's a, um, a new uh, a revolution that of work that people are looking at low cost, low power, uh, tangible user authentication. So people have been using a, a smart glove or a smart pen okay, on the touch screen, okay, which contains identification token to identify okay, who's entering the pin number and who's writing on the, on the touch pad. And we can also have this, we also have the earlier work called capacitive touch authentication by using a ring type of sensors on the bottom. And you can utilize either a virtual uh, keyboard or virtual pin pad or this uh, um, lock pattern, okay, to help us to do the use authentication. And this uh, basically the underneath technology is that uh, we look into the, uh, both the time domain and also the spectral domain. And especially in the uh, spectrum domain, uh, what we do is that we, uh, we look into this uh, spectral uh, point-based features and also the MFCC-based uh, features. The MFCC is widely utilized in the acoustic domain. Okay, MFCC is widely utilized in acoustic domain. And uh, uh, in our case, we find that it is also usable uh, in the vibration domain. It is also sensitive for the vibration signals. So in our approach, okay, we show that um, the work, okay, the basic work can uh, uh, be successfully worked under the combination of the uh, sensors and also the virtual ping, um, ping pad or with the lock pattern. And eventually, okay, we would like this to be worked with the gesture based or the signature based um, approach that can be utilized in the door panel Okay, or in the desk, uh, in the desktop. So for the door panel approach, we envision that this kind of approach could be uh, applied in the high rise uh, office buildings or apartment buildings, and even for the uh, hotel rooms. So one point 
I like to point, a uh, very important point is about the vibration signal design, that uh, we design the signal in the high frequency domain, which can reduce the distraction of the users, okay, once the system is being triggered. And also uh, uh, in our system, we need to look into how to perform this uh, uh, signal uh, synchronization from the sending part, from the sending side and also the receiving side, and also how to overcome how to overcome the clock drift effect. Yeah, so for many of the other technical details, um, if you're interested in it, I can refer you uh, to our technical paper. So for the next part, okay, I'll quickly um, go over, okay. Um, our work is that we want to show that uh, when we look into the, man, we have so many IoT devices at home these days. So I would like to show you, okay, the contactless approach that is by using the IoT sensing, okay, it can help us, okay, it can help us to perform sleep monitoring, especially we show that by just using the Wi-Fi signals that are emitted from the um, smart appliances and also the smart TVs at your home environment, we can uh, perform the vital signs tracking at night. So why this is important, okay, sleep monitoring and vital signs measurement? Um, because we all understand that um, the quality, uh, have a quality sleep is very important to, your, uh, to maintain good health. And also your sleep quality reflect, reflect your health, uh, reflect your health status. Okay, that is whether uh, you're under stress or you have high anxiety. And especially if for those people, they have the sleep apnea problem. Okay, that is during your sleep at night, maybe your breathing rate, maybe your breathing uh, can uh, stop for a few seconds and then uh, resume. And for some people, if they suffer from asthma and the sleep apnea problem, this will be a, especially a severe uh, problem once they find it problem and it goes into the uh, doctor's office. So we like to see that whether it's possible, we can perform the long-term at home uh, sleep monitoring instead of to let the patients, once they find the problem, then they go to the hospital. And usually in the hospital, they have to uh, wear many, uh, many sensors in their body and they only have a couple of nights uh, to measure their sleep quality, uh, which, only show, which only show very short-term um, behaviors of their uh, sleep patterns. So, so people are looking at whether it is possible we can do the sleep monitoring um, at home by tracking the vital signs. And we understand that some of the wearable devices provide the capability to perform this uh, a measurement of, of uh, heartbeats at night, heart rates at, a heartbeat rate at night. Uh, but usually this requires the uh, users to wear uh, devices at night and many um, elder people and also young kids, they do not want to do that. And also still there's a lack, lack of solution to measure the breathing rate at the same time, which is a, um, a a strong indication of if you have any sleep disorders and sleep opinion problems at night. So uh, um, the research, okay, going into looking to the domain is that people have been, researchers are using the, um, they built the uh, homemade antennas and also they try to utilize this uh, uh, USRP, uh, USRP board and also, also FMCW radar uh, to look into these uh, problems. So from our approach, okay, we like to see that whether we can use Wi-Fi, which are available in many of the off-the-shelf devices to help us to do this long-term vital signs monitoring during, uh, during sleep. So the idea, okay, is that um, the breathing and heartbeat, okay, usually will cause um, small body movement, okay, cause small body movement. So we like to see that, okay, when we have this Wi-Fi signals, okay, going through, your body during your sleep, whether it can capture, okay, your body movement. We understand, okay, that Wi-Fi signals, once you walk around inside of the Wi-Fi environment, and if you do the gesture, um, if you do certain gestures, the Wi-Fi signals will get disturbed. But how about if you sleep, you only cause tiny body movement. What's the reaction of the Wi-Fi signals? So we look at the channel state information. Okay. The channel state information provide, for example, 36 subcarriers that has the very detailed information 
very detailed information of the channel state. So our work is that we build upon that, okay, to show that we can determine the first, we can determine the cross grain sleep event, right? If you turn around to change your sleep posture, okay, we'll be able to determine it. And that can trigger, okay, now we're fine grained sleep monitoring uh, to go down to the level of the um, heartbeat and also the uh, breathing rate measurement. So we're also looking to the, um, uh, the spectrum domain, okay, um, and to help us to, uh, to look into the uh, spectrogram and to further to determine okay, whether we can uh, um, estimate heart rate and breathing rate. And especially if you have more than one person sleeping in one bed, um, our uh, system can still be successfully uh, determining the sleep, uh, uh, sleep patterns. And also uh, uh, we can uh, determine the uh, people's breathing rate and heartbeats uh, simultaneous, simultaneously at the same time. And in our more recent work, uh, we have the collaboration with uh, 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 prof uh, Professor Petra Polo and also Professor Wu in our department. Uh, we're looking at using a millimeter wave to further do this uh, uh, vital signs monitoring that when people, uh, we do not need to, during the sleep, it's like people can sit in front of the computer or sit, uh, uh, just sit in front of a desk will be able to do this multiple people vital signs monitoring. So it can have um, many uh, um, broad applications that we're trying uh, to do right now is to utilize the uh, sleep, uh, sorry, to utilize the heartbeat and breathing rate as a second factor to do user authentication. Okay, so I just want to say that, you know, many of our work um, are very practical. Our research work are very practical. So uh, um, we have a patent in our work and we also uh, move our work uh, to have the industry com uh, impacts that uh, we have a, a few companies, they have already licensed, licensed in our work and also working with us closely to make them as products. Okay, so I just want to briefly talk about uh, what's next, okay, for the uh, going forward, okay, uh, in our uh, research group, what we're doing is that uh, currently we're looking to the security vulnerabilities in the voice assistant systems, because we've seen that the, the popularity of the voice assistant systems, and it can store your, your schedule, and also can store your, your favorite um, um, items in all aspects. So, uh, um, and also the attackers can mimic your voice and to launch the attack to perform the uh, online payments. So all of this, okay, reveal the security vulnerabilities in your uh, voice assistant systems that uh, um, we are looking at it right now. And we have some uh, papers uh, recently published uh, in the um, top security conferences in, uh, uh, in CCS. And also going forward, okay, we're lo also looking into the security problems in the AR VR systems. And you can imagine that in this uh, uh, virtual world, okay, it's very powerful. It can do many things for you. But meanwhile, there are many, there, there are many aspects, okay, that could be modified by the attackers. For example, okay, if you utilize it as your uh, navigation system, the attacker, they can remove an incoming vehicle or to remove a pedestrian who's trying to pass in the street. So this can cause severe uh, security problems, accidents on the road. And also uh, for many, uh, um, for many uh, identity, -based, identity based applications in the AR VR systems that are also uh, could be easily attacked. And our recent uh, work that published in Mobicom that we show that we can utilize the AR VR headset can capture uh, uh, can capture the uh, the human speech uh, by going through this uh, um, a human muscle uh, facial muscle movement and utilize that we can do a gender um, classification of male or female and then further to do the speaker identification and now we're looking at uh, whether it is possible by just capture the muscle movement, um, utilizing this AR VR headset to determine the speech okay, that you're doing. Okay, so these are the um, ongoing work where we see the future work that um, we are act, act, uh, currently actively working on. 
Okay, so uh, this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>